If you have any question, please raise your arm and I will pass you the mic. Um, I will start uh, since uh, you also wrote uh, the screen, the, the original screenplay for uh, for this film. I will start by asking what was uh, the initial drive, the primary motivation for this film? Why a film uh, set in uh, rural Austria in the 1930s? <laughs> um, poo, um, I mean, this is some time ago, when one has to say. <laughs> And uh, this actually was my my very first uh, script, and uh, um, sort of when we uh, when I tried to 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 get it financed, uh, I was told that uh, it would be too difficult for me as a first time director. And uh, fortunately, uh, the production company said, "So let's do a smaller movie first, and then this one." So um, actually, this was just um, you know actually my my one and only script that I wrote on spec completely. Uh, and um, the idea was to to play around with this traditional genre of Heimatfilm, uh, uh, as we call it in German, which is, uh, you know, about people living in the countryside. And usually these uh, Heimatfilms are all uh, ways uh, socially very static. You know, because they are the farmers who own the farms and inherit them to their children, and but nothing changed. There's no social dynamics, and and the idea was uh, to say so in this genre, in this world, uh, what's happening if there would be some social dynamics uh, uh, that that uh, sort of uh, the people are not used to at all and and would not know how to deal with it. And make it less sentimental, let's say, and less moralizing than uh, the Heimat films also. It's, yes. And, and sort of, uh, what we also tried, there was sort of a, um, sort of zap genre, sort of a, the new modern Heimat film, which was sort of uh, rather set in, in, uh, uh, our time or in the fifties, sixties, uh, you know, which, which, uh, used to be, um, you know, like, like, uh, few colors and everything was sort of linen and wood and uh, we really tried to make it very alive uh, and and strong colors and and you know always these very uh, short lenses to 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 um yeah to to get as much life and energy into each and every frame as possible um what you represent in this film is uh, like a commune, a felon story, uh, a socialist uh, utopian community. Yeah. And um, I read that uh, Jay Hoberman, the reputed uh, American critic, wrote in the village voice that this is a Marxist comedy. And another American uh, critic, uh, Scott Tobias from uh, Vienna, also wrote that this is a proletariat uh, comedy. How how is your opinion about these uh, labels? That um, I mean, yes, it is sort of. Um, um, I, I I think you can't deny that this is a political movie uh, in a way, and and especially I think uh, what what uh, I was dealing with is. Uh, Austria is in many ways um, a very conservative country, you know, and uh, not only that people uh, vote um, conservative, but it's also, you know, this thinking, uh, what we have here, it's always been like that. So uh, why change? You know, change is sort of at least suspicious and, and usually bad. Uh, and this is something you know, which, which was especially for me back then, uh, being younger than today, you know, something which, which really sort of makes you mad, you know, cause when you want to, to, to create a new world for yourself and in general, uh, you know, this thinking, no, 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 it's always been like that. And, <clears throat> uh, maybe there are no reasons for that, but just for the sake of conserving things the way they always have been, uh, uh let's stick to them. Any questions from the audience? Uh, <clears throat> uh, it's one of uh, uh, It seemed to me that the uh, the choice of music in the film 
is um, well, I wonder whether you chose it yourself or if it was suggested by someone else in the crew. It's uh, Eric Satie and Giuseppe Verdi and very, very well known stuff that relates to something else. Was it done on purpose or was it like your choice or, you know? Um, yes, it was my choice. Actually, I, I always like it uh, when, when, um, sort of the score, the music is really sort of, um, how you call it, sort of a, uh, an element that speaks for itself, you know, and I don't like music that's sort of, you know, somewhere in the background and just uh, trying to, to uh, create an emotional atmosphere. And um, in case of this movie, but, but also in case of the counterfeiters, um, it was um, uh, a coincidence that I, I, you know, I got that uh, Eric Satie sat, uh, CD uh, when I was writing the script and, and heard it uh, always when I was writing. And so, you know, like in my mind, it uh, uh, grew together. And I also and like the idea to, to use something which is sort of not the obvious choice. Uh, and, you know, and, and, uh, in case of the counterfeiters, it, it was tango, uh, for a, a concentration camp movie, uh, uh, same story. And, uh, here, but in both, uh, for both movies and here in particular, uh, I, I felt sort of that, that, um, the spirit of the music is, is, is just right. You know, this very, it's, it's, very brutal in ways and can be very tender at the same time. And uh, so I, I just felt it, it was appropriate. Any other questions? Uh, speaking of the visual style, because you mentioned you wanted to have uh, very strong uh, colors, uh, this film made me think of the Dutch uh, Golden Age painters uh, in the 17th century, like Rembrandt, Vermeer, and so on, and uh, their uh, genre paintings with scenes of everyday life. Was this a source of inspiration for you? Um, no, I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, sort of a uh, matter of fact is, uh, I think, with... with um like with with ancient greek for example you know we always have this uh, wrong perception uh, that uh, you know there were no colors because uh, the colors don't exist anymore and we know now that the greek columns were were painted in uh, uh, all colors of the rainbow and also uh, back then in these farmhouses uh, people used color because people love color you know and it's sort of our modern thing that we say oh how elegant and sort of what a reduced nice aesthetic uh, they had which just is not true so so uh, doing research we found out they they did use a lot of color in the rooms uh, for example but also in the stables they were uh, painting the stables with uh, um, the blood of, of cows, uh, because that sort of uh, is supposed to be good against flies. So, so these colors um, are authentic in a way. Any question? Uh, how was uh, the film received in Austria? Because I know it was uh, like a festival hit, it got many awards in Rotterdam, Ghent, and other festivals, but how was it received uh, in uh, such a conservative society, as you say, uh, as the Austrian one? Um, it, it was quite interesting because in the very same area, which is sort of uh, the north of Austria, uh, they had uh, shot like 20 years before um, a sort of similar project also uh, about the life on uh, on 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 farms uh, and back then this was a huge scandal and you know the the uh, shooting crew they they sabotaged them and slid open the wheels of the uh, camera car and stuff like that uh, but uh, at that time there was still sort of uh, the farmers saw themselves as a class with a certain self-esteem and I thought when we shot this movie which was 1998 um, this class of, 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 of self-conscious farmers did not exist anymore you know and and uh, most of the farmers do it uh, 
at that time uh, were sort of half the day going to the factory or, or doing another job and only uh, were only part-time uh, farmers and you know and so uh, you don't care that much uh, uh, if 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 somebody makes a a uh, movie about the past of your group because you know this is not that uh, important anymore and sort of this pride of of, of farmers uh, had disappeared in a way and now it's sort of you know it's sort of a tourist attraction and they uh, that house where we our our main location you know they sort of this is the house where where the Siebelbauern have been shot and. You know, and it's 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 just uh, sort of a sign of of the change of the importance of 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 uh, farmers uh, in in the Austrian society. Uh, the house and it's like a museum. <laughs> no, I think they were uh, renting rooms. You know, and sort of, and it's it's sort of um, this is a sort of rather poor uh, uh, area and so you know they they don't have many tourist attractions and so <laughs> they they so it's a main kind of uh, <laughs> use that and uh, apart from that I mean this is very beautiful architecture and and sort of authentic uh, mm-hmm. architecture with these uh, you know the roofs made from from wheat and uh, mm-hmm. so you don't find that too often anymore unfortunately mm-hmm. Yes. Um, where did you get uh, the inspiration of the story? Um, sort of, I think it was uh, um, 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 there was a um, a movie with with. Um, Kiefer Sutherland and and a group of these young Hollywood actors and it was a western uh, with young cowboys, hmm? young guns, yes. <laughs> and so I said, ah, that's a cool idea. Uh, why not do that uh, uh, for the Heimatfilm genre? You know, because uh, for a younger audience and sort of uh, have younger protagonists. And so the the thinking was, okay, so so how to start? How uh, um, can I explain that there is a, a, a Austrian farm with with mainly young guns? Yeah? And so you have to kill all the old ones, and here you go. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I was wondering um, what significance the Heimat genre has in general to you, like um, if, if it was like a um, general influence for you uh, since you are subver- subverting it here. Um, yeah, pretty much. Uh, I, I, I didn't get the beginning, like, the significance um, if, of what? About, about this, this genre, um, if it's um, uh, if at some... Um, like uh, more of an impact, like in a, a like, uh, like say true true life or so. If it's, uh, um, I mean, if the question is whether whether this is sort of uh, where I come from, or you know, I'm uh, no, I'm 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 very urban uh, by by birth, uh, but um, sort of the the thinking was, and I think that's true, and that's also. Uh, if you like a recommendation for for uh, up and coming filmmakers from here, uh, what's um, what sort of the international art house uh, market wants are uh, movies that have a uh, have a personality, have an origin, you know, and that you make something in that case which is uniquely uh, Austrian. And not sort of some uh, internationalish uh, mishmash, uh, but of course, uh, what you have to try to achieve as well is the combination of 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 
making a movie that has sort of an origin, but at the same time uh, is telling a universal story uh, that also an international audience can relate to. And and this is sort of, uh, I think, uh, still a good recipe uh, for um, um, uh, in the art house world uh, for successful movies. You know, so, so, cause, 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 you know, when you start, you, everybody wants to make Hollywood movies or not everybody. <laughs> yeah, others want to make Bresson movies, but, uh, you shouldn't neither make Bresson movies, uh, nor Hollywood movies. You should make Croatian movies, but Croatian movies, uh, that tell universal stories. How did you select your uh, your actors? Because uh, Sophie Roisla, who plays Amy, is really extraordinary, and also Lucas uh, Simo Schwartz. And it's interesting that uh, another character uh, is uh, the narrator uh, Severin. Uh, this is something I learned from from um, Terence Malick. And uh, if you know Terence Malick films, you you may. Um, have seen where I learned some stuff from. And I think he's really uh, a genius in making use of this commentary because uh, in his movies, the commentary does not uh, like uh, explain things or uh, explain things you didn't have the money to show, but it's sort of a different level. Uh, uh, things are told which are some of them completely irrelevant for the story and uh, it has sort of a quality of its of its own and uh, in Terence Malick movies like Days of Heaven of Heaven for example it's also a, a minor character the that girl uh, who's telling the story from mm -hmm. from sort of an outside uh, position and and I thought that was uh, yeah very elegant uh, device. Mm -hmm. And about the actors, Sophie Royce and Simon. Um, I mean, Simon Schwarz is uh, uh, um, like um, my first movie. He had his uh, first. That was his first. Uh, uh, movie part ever and so this was more or less his uh, <laughs> second and um, sort of the others actually uh, many of them are um, famous uh, theater actors like Ulrich Wildgruber you know from Berlin uh, uh, Volksbühne mm -hmm. and uh, so the idea wasn't and I mean those of you who speak uh, German uh, might have realized it's not uh, uh, sort of we I try to create an, an artificial language. Uh, this is not sort of a genuine upper Austrian dialect uh, because um, it's this is very hard to achieve, you know because 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 in Austria uh, with all its mountains and valleys, um, uh, people speak different dialects if there's a mountain in between, you know, and uh, uh, Tyrol and Vorarlberg are completely different or uh, Styria or Upper Austria. Everybody has a very specific dialect and these actors, you know, uh, sort of uh, the old lady who was from Tyrol, uh, Sophie Reuss is from Upper Austria, you know, everybody was from from somewhere else and so I felt um, instead of making sort of an artificial sort of Austrian dialect to go for an artificial language in the first place. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. So, yes. <laughs> okay. One last question for our guest. Okay. <laughs> So thank you very much, Stefan Rutzowski. Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs>